California. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is something that I wanted to show you and point out to you because in the 15 years that I've been here, almost 15 years that I've been here in, in at KTLA, I have never seen this this designation. I, in fact, I've never seen it in as long as I've been working in TV, and it's almost 25 years. A particularly dangerous situation. This is the first time that I have seen this designation, and it is particularly intense near the Santa Clarita Valley, north the we northwestern end of the viewing area. So along the Santa Susana Mountains, along the eastern end of the San Gabriel Mountains, that is where we're getting the strongest winds. And when we have these conditions in play, we are expecting extreme fire behavior instead of the normal time that we see of six hours and low relative humidity or six hours and let's say really intense temperatures for them to actually issue a red flag warning. These consistent um, features have to be present for a, a period of three hours or more. And that's just because of how strong and how dangerous the winds were expected to be. Luckily at this point, I'll show you coming up in just a second. I have not seen anything close to 100, but we did get wind speeds of 85 miles per hour in the western end of the San Gabriel Mountains. Uh, so that's like right on the edge of the Santa Clarita Valley. Uh, that pass actually happens to be where we're getting some of those strongest guns along the Santa Susana Mountains, 83 miles per hour. And then along the Santa Monica Mountains, 76 miles per hour. The eastern end of the Ventura County Mountains also had temperature, or excuse me, wind speeds of like 69 and 70 miles per hour. I'll fill that one in when I get an actual number from. But again, these winds have been very intense. So we've got two main corridors where these winds are funneling into Southern California. They're coming in through that 14, five split right around the, that it takes you up to the grapevine. So that's one corridor. And so that corridor is leading right to Malibu. And you'll see that on a map in just a second. The other corridor is along the Inland Empire. So coming out of the Cajon Pass and then shooting straight towards the Pacific Ocean. And that is going to hit areas through like the, obviously the Santa Ana Mountains and then heading towards the Pacific Ocean, impacting areas like Mission Viejo, Laguna Hills. Those areas are where we're going to see that track go. The Santa Ana Mountains today saw 79 miles per hour, Arrowhead Springs 76, Rancho Cucamonga in the Inland Empire 71 miles per hour, and along the Banning Pass, 67 miles per hour. Remember, that's an east-west corridor, and that's where you see those strong, dangerous winds. The reason why we had that overturned truck earlier this morning was because that happened along the 210, also happened to be an east-west corridor, strong crosswinds, blew it right over. I don't know how heavy it was, probably not very loaded because it's the lighter uh, big rigs that end up getting toppled over. And so that's why we had that situation earlier today. The current winds, here's what they're looking like. We're looking at winds out of the north of Burbank at 10 miles per hour. So again, most of the coastal basin, not a big impact. But as you head towards the northwestern end of the viewing area, this is what I was talking about. The eastern end of the San Gabriels and then heading towards the Santa Santa Susana Mountains. Uh, and that's where we're going to continue to see these winds. We're not expecting them to die down. They may even pick up again overnight. Uh, these winds are going to be consistent um, at least through this evening and for much of those overnight hours. We'll take a look at the rest of your forecast, including the seven day, the temperatures, and all the other uh, features that are impacting this, these fire conditions in just a few minutes. Back to you guys for